A year and a half ago, I built a brand new home, and today I have officially pulled out $150,000 for less than 500 bucks. What's up guys, it's Casey McEwen back again with another video this week. Today I wanted to discuss what a HELOC is and how I'm using a HELOC to take advantage of future real estate investments. So first things first, if you do not know what a HELOC is, a HELOC is a home equity line of credit. It's an advantage that homeowners can take to really at the end of the day, utilize the equity in their home to do whatever they want with the cash. Now most people, what they will do is they'll take out a HELOC maybe to improve their house. In my case, the home equity line of credit that I have in my house is a brand new house. I don't need to improve or over improve my actual primary residence. So the intent for my HELOC is for future investments. Now with interest rates and everything going absolutely insane right now in the market, you would think that a home equity line of credit right now would not be a smart thing. I know people out right now that are getting five and a half up to 6% interest rates on investment properties. Well, I can tell you again, it is an adjusted rate. So over time they will adjust the rates. But as of now, I'm at a three and a half percent interest rate on the $150,000 that I'm pulling for my HELOC. In my particular situation, it was a relatively quick HELOC and I'll explain why. Now, when you get a HELOC, you've got to get an appraisal. The appraisal is hands down the most important part of you being able to qualify for a certain amount. Some people may be able to pull a little bit off to pay a credit card. Some other people may be pulling a substantial amount from a HELOC to go purchase a property. In my situation, I'm pulling out about 150,000 and I'm going to go into detail about what my intentions are later in the video, but I wanted to go back to the appraisal. In my situation, they just did a desk appraisal. A desk appraisal basically said, hey, these are the homes that are selling around in the area, and this is roughly what they're selling for. And based off of that, without even seeing the interior or your backyard or the condition of your property, we're just going to drive by and make sure that it's actually free and standing still and not completely demoed. And we're going to give you $150,000 in equity. So to be honest with you, I could have gotten even more out of my HELOC if I got an actual appraisal but it would have cost me a lot more money and it would have cost me a lot more time. So just quick caveat there, if you want a quick HELOC, I think my HELOC from start to finish was two and a half weeks, maybe three weeks tops. If you want it quick, just get a desk appraisal if you know you've got equity in your home. And me personally, being able to pull out $150,000 and apply that to a couple additional opportunities for myself and just some stress relief on me with everything that's going on is going to help me out substantially. Now going back to what you may use a HELOC for. Now personally, I'm not a huge advocate of a pool. I'm not a huge advocate of landscaping. I'm not a huge advocate of a lot of different aspects of improving your property because I'm an investor first and foremost. So first things first, you've got to look at what your intention with the property is. If it's your primary residence and you're going to be living there for the rest of your life and it's your forever home, then yes, pull a HELOC out and do whatever you want to that property because at the end of the day, you're making it what you want to make it. Now on the flip side, if it's a property that you've moved into and are occupying and have owned for quite some time and you've built some equity in it and you're considering maybe selling it, maybe it makes sense to pull out a HELOC, allow that HELOC to then be put back into the house and remodel the house. And if you're putting in 50,000 or if you're putting in a hundred thousand dollars, all the work as well, you should hopefully get a good return on that amount invested. Then you can turn around and actually sell it and make a profit. But I would say most people, what they're doing is improving their permanent primary residence or applying that in my case to some other type of purchase or some other type of investment. I personally don't know a ton of people that are pulling out HELOCs to remodel the interior of their personal primary home and then just turning around and reselling it. But in my case, I'm gonna give you guys a rundown and a little bit of this is more of an update on kind of everything that's moving along with the rest of my investments. So if you watch my other videos, I'm in the midst of of selling one of my properties and I'm gonna be rolling the funds into a luxury cabin up in Broken Bow, Oklahoma. Now we've hit a couple snags and by a couple, I mean a handful of snags. I'm not expecting any issues moving forward, but you just never know in this market. So I will give you guys more details probably in a future video when everything kind of works itself out. But a HELOC for me in this case is just kind of a safe haven and a second option for me to be able to purchase the cabin if my current opportunity kind of falls through. Now I will have all of that cleared up by the end of this week and the funds should be deposited probably by Thursday or Friday. Now by the end of this week, I should have all of my HELOC funds and all the situations going on with my duplex and the cabin should hopefully be cleared out so I'll know exactly which direction I wanna go. The two directions I wanna go is obviously the intended 1031 exchange to sell my duplex and apply that to the cabin. If that doesn't work out though, I have a backup plan to do a reverse 1031 exchange which you may or may not have ever heard of. It's basically 
where you use your own money to purchase a property, which I would then use my HELOC funds to then go purchase the cabin. And then when my duplex eventually sells, I use the proceeds from my duplex to then pay back myself. So it's kind of like a reverse 1031 exchange. Now, the downside of this is it's substantially more expensive than a traditional 1031 exchange. And just to give you guys some dollar set amount, a lot of it's going to vary based on the purchase price of what property you're purchasing because you're technically on a reverse 1031 exchange. You are actually not the owner. The bank is the owner until you actually pay yourself back or then pay the bank back. So in a reverse 1031 exchange cost wise, it's going to cost me 10 to $15,000. I can tell you my normal 1031 exchange though is going to run about 750 so clearly there's a much more desirable route but again i want to make sure my is covered just because at the end of the day i do not want to lose the opportunity with this cabin so if by the end of the week everything goes as planned i'll have my duplex go in the direction it should to then 1031 into my cabin and going back to my heloc my heloc's intention is actually to pay for a majority of the furniture with my new commercial building also with the substantial growth that's coming with my company i want to make sure my company has a substantial amount of additional cash if anything else occurs moving forward now many months ago i actually made an entire video about what the cost of running a real estate team is and it's not cheap so so as far as the market is right now, where it's very, very difficult to get buyers under contract. And to be honest with you, my team isn't uh, necessarily performing at the level in which I want them to perform. It doesn't help that we're in a tiny little office, but moving to a larger office will certainly help, especially having them in the office every single day. Now I'm continuing to produce myself, which is honestly affording a majority of the expenses when it comes to my business. But at the end of the day, it doesn't hurt to have a HELOC and you don't even necessarily need to pull the funds. I can be approved for a HELOC for $150,000 and not be paying any interest on it because I haven't pulled the money. So the interest actually starts on the money that you pull. So for instance, if I wanted to go buy furniture and it was $50,000, I would pull $50,000 out, use that $50,000 for what I need to, and then I would be accruing interest and making payments on just that $50,000 loan. Now, when it comes to HELOCs, there are certainly pros and cons, and it comes down to whether or not you're truly good with your finances or not. At the end of the day, if someone just hands you $150,000 or $50,000, if you're not the best with your finances, you may just go and blow that $50,000 with purposes that are not intentional. Now, if you are great with your finances, a HELOC could definitely provide a ton of value for you. And again, you're only paying interest on anything that you actually pull from the HELOC. Now, also when it comes to the interest that you're paying on your HELOC, that's a tax deductible expense. Also, when it comes to the HELOC itself, there's not really any limits per se as far as what you can use the funds on. So that's certainly a pro. A lot of different banks, if you borrow money from them, or if you, for instance, maybe use a construction loan, obviously the intent with the construction loan is to use the funds that they're giving you for the construction. At the end of the day, you can't just take the $150,000 remodel budget that they give you and go buy a fancy car. And a HELOC, if you truly wanted to, you could go buy a super fancy car if you wanted with your HELOC. It's not something I suggest, but at the end of the day, it's something that you can do. I would say also a HELOC is a great option for debt consolidation. A lot of people have a bunch of different credit cards that they can't necessarily pay off. Credit cards are horrible if you are not paying them off monthly because interest rates with credit cards are anywhere from 18 to 30%, maybe even higher depending on your credit score. 18 to 30% depending on the credit card and your credit score. But but a HELOC in my situation, three and a half percent. You can see the substantial difference. If I were to, you know, be in substantial credit card debt and I wanted to consolidate, you know, maybe some student loans, maybe some additional debt that had a much higher interest rate, I could pay all of those off, take the money out from my HELOC and then just pay my HELOC back at a three and a half percent interest rate. But again, adjustable rate. So make sure you're careful with the adjustment over time that the interest rate's likely going to go up. Now, the last thing with a HELOC is yes, you may own a home. Let's say you acquired a property from someone in the family. They just gave it to you after they passed, but you haven't worked in the last 10 years. Unfortunately, you're not going to be able to qualify for a HELOC. A HELOC is the same thing as applying for a traditional mortgage. Now there are different aspects of it, but you have to have valid income and you have to be able to qualify to pay back the loan before you even are considered to get a HELOC, even if you do have a substantial amount of equity. Even if you do, let's say, own the property outright, a bank is not gonna lend you any equity on the house unless you have a viable way to pay back. 
Now, heat locks honestly are simple. For me, this is my first heat lock that I've ever used. It's something just more for safety at the end of the day than anything else. But going through it for the first time, it was the simplest process, far simpler than purchasing a house, far simpler than applying for even a car loan. It was very straightforward. And at the end of the day, all it required was me to sign a couple papers at the end of closing. And here at the end of this week, I'm gonna have a draw opportunity to pull whatever I want out of the $150,000. So there may not be any questions for you guys at the end of the day when it comes to HELOCs, but it is a huge opportunity if you have valid income and you wanna take advantage of a good source of additional income to be applied even potentially to other investments at a low interest rate right now, especially with where interest rates are rising right now. But if you do have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below and I'll make sure to get right back to you. But thanks again, guys. Make sure to like and subscribe. It really does help and stay tuned for the next video.